What's up guys and welcome back to the Playcast. I'm so glad you're joining me again this week and I am so excited to get started on this next series on Acts chapter number two, the day of Pentecost. We're going to be talking about receiving outpouring of the Spirit because I truly believe that in these last days, God is going to pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. I believe that today. And if you believe that with me, get ready for a wild ride as we go through the entirety of Acts chapter number two over the next several episodes of this podcast. And we're just going to break it down verse by verse um, in the same format um, that we always do. But if you're ready for this, please, if you're watching on YouTube, like the video. If you're listening, leave us a five-star rating. Tell us what you think, and please share the podcast with as many friends as possible. We're breaking down one of the most important passages of Scripture in the entire Bible, so you don't want to miss a single episode. So also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss one of these. Now we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to read it in the English Standard Version, and yes, I have a physical Bible this time. My internet's working very poorly, so we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. (laughs) But we're going to read it out of the English Standard Version. Acts chapter number 2, we're going to start with verse 1, and it's the first verse we're going to read, and the only verse for point number 1. So, verse 1, here we go. Acts chapter number 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together... In one place. And so point number one today is that unity is a prerequisite for an outpouring. Unity is a prerequisite for an outpouring. If we ever want to see an outpouring of the Spirit in these last days, if we ever want to see God pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, we need to be unified as the body of Christ We need to come to the unity of the faith through the power of the Spirit in these last days. And so we understand that when the day of Pentecost arrives, there's 120 people gathered in the upper room, many of Jesus' disciples, um, his mom, all these things. We see that in the upper room. And they're all together in one place, and they're all praying together together seeking and tarrying for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And so in unity, they prayed together. Together is where we find unity. And so that's the importance of coming to the house of God, coming to church and fellowshipping with fellow like-minded believers. That's part of the importance of that if we ever want to see revival in these last days if we ever want to see an outpouring of the spirit of god we've got to get unified we we have to have fellowship one with another and as we pray together and break bread together and believe in the apostles doctrine together as we'll see later on in this series when we see those things revival can take place We also understand that in the Bible it says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So when we gather together, God is present with us. His spirit is there with us. And so if we ever want his spirit to fall, if we ever want an outpouring of that spirit, we must be unified and together. And so that's what they did on the day of Pentecost. And it was a prerequisite for what was going to happen. So point number one again today is unity is a prerequisite for an outpouring. And so let's keep going. Verse two, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And so point number two today is that the Holy Spirit wants to touch and fill every willing vessel. 
I want to say that again. The Holy Spirit wants to touch and fill every willing vessel. And so as our story continues, we see that those that were in the upper room began to experience something phenomenal. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, like as of a rushing mighty wind, a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they're sitting. So the whole place was filled with this sound, like a wind. And like we talked about in John chapter number three, in our A Night with Nicodemus series, we hear the scripture talking about uh, the wind bloweth where it lists, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes or where it goes. So is the Spirit of God. So we understand that the Spirit of God moves like a wind, but not only does it move, but you hear it. You hear the sound thereof. And so in the midst of this upper room, all of a sudden, there's a mighty rushing wind, a sound like a mighty wind coming through the entire house where they were sitting. It filled the entire room. You know what that tells me? There's not a single place the Holy Spirit can't go. And there's not a single place that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to fill up. He wants to fill you up. He wants you. He wants you. And so we understand that. And another thing that happens is that divided tongues or cloven tongues, like as a fire, sat upon each and every one of them. So again, the Holy Spirit, like a fire, begins to fall on these people in the upper room. And cloven tongues appeared to them, like as a fire, and it rested on each of them. Every single one of them was touched by the Holy Spirit through these cloven tongues, like as a fire. And oftentimes, the Holy Spirit is also categorized as like a fire, as we see when Jesus talks about, or when John talks about Jesus, and he says, you know, I baptize you with water, but he who comes after me wants to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so that's what's happening here in Acts chapter number two. The fulfillment of that prophetic utterance by John is happening. A wind and a fire coming, that's the Holy Spirit. And he wants to fill each and every one of us. God wants us to have his spirit. And so as we understand that today, we understand that, okay, this outpouring is for everyone. It's for every single person that is willing to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That puts their faith in Jesus. You can receive the Holy Ghost today. If your faith is in Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is the greatest gift you can ever receive. And you can have it. And God wants you to have it. Believe that today. So again, point number two is that the Holy Spirit wants to touch and fill every willing vessel. And so we continue. We're going to read just one verse again here. Verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And oh man, this is where it gets controversial for some. Now, if you're of the same belief that I am, that when the Holy Spirit comes upon somebody, they begin to speak with tongues. This, this is a great verse for us, but for those that they don't believe that the gift, that tongues comes when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is a little shaky. But point number three today is that everyone filled with the Spirit in the upper room spoke with tongues. They spoke with other tongues. That's just a fact. That, that's what the scripture tells us. And they were all filled and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And so what, what, what do we see here? 
if every single one of them spoke in tongues, then that's kind of important. I mean, it doesn't just say, you know, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and some began to speak with other tongues. If it was only meant for some, then maybe they would put that in the scripture. But the scripture is evident. All of them began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit filled them. So we must believe that that is for us as well. And now many will say, well, that's a, de that's a descriptive passage. You can't use that to be prescriptive. Well, there's also another verse in the Bible that is prescriptive, and it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And when it says all, it, it means all. And so if I can receive spiritual insight from a verse like this, as long as it goes with the fullness of Scripture, and I'm not taking a verse completely out of context and trying to pull some wacky belief out of it. No, I'm just going off of what it clearly states that all of them began to speak with tongues. And if all of them did, why shouldn't we? It's a good question, right? It's a fair question. It's a question that for a long time we've been trying to answer. Is tongues for everyone or not? Well, this is my question. Is the Holy Spirit for everyone? The answer emphatically is yes. And if the Holy Spirit is for everyone... And everyone now is filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter number 2 spoke with tongues. Why shouldn't that be an experience that we also have? That's what I want to leave you with today. I'm not going to get too controversial with it, but I want to leave you with that on point number 3 today. Why not? Why not? And so point number three again is everyone filled with the spirit in the upper room spoke with other tongues. Again, let's keep going. I'm getting through this one a little quicker. <laughs> I know some of these episodes have been going pretty long, so I'm trying to get better. Don't worry. All right, so now we're going to keep going. And this is a much lengthier passage that I want to get through because it's all a part of point number four. So starting with verse 5, and we're going to go through verse 11. Okay, so follow along with me here. Now, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. As a point number four today, is the sound of an outpouring will amaze many. The sound of an outpouring will amaze many. And isn't this so relevant right now? After we've seen what was going on at Asbury University and how People were just amazed at what was going on, the revival that was taking place, the outpouring that was going on. It amazed people. You would hear about this revival just going on and on. And it's like, really? That's amazing. I mean, it really is. The same thing happened on the day of Pentecost. People walking by, there are so many people there because the Feast of Pentecost was a very important festival 
for Jewish life. And so there were so many visitors coming from all over the place to come to Jerusalem to, to worship God, whether Jew or a proselyte. So that's somebody who was a Gentile, but began to believe in the God of the Jews. And so they're coming to Jerusalem and they're hearing this and they're saying, what is going on? I'm hearing my native tongue and I know nobody here knows it, but me and maybe a couple other people that are around me. But I'm hearing them glorify God. I'm hearing them, you know, telling me of the mighty works of God. But they, there's no way they would know this language. Aren't these that speak Galileans? Are They're unlearned. There's no way they know my language. And so God uses the gift of tongues here. He uses tongues as a sign to the unbeliever. So the, the person that didn't believe in Jesus and what he did. And so God uses tongues in this situation as a sign. And they say, whoa, this is amazing. I, I'm hearing in my own tongue the mighty works of God. And so we also can learn from this that tongues can sometimes be a language that is understandable, a language that is spoken somewhere in the world. And you hear stories of missionaries where they would go into another country and start speaking in other tongues, and the natives there would understand what they were saying. And so this is definitely not out of the ordinary for the apostolic church. And so God uses this as a sign to these people around, okay, something, something's going on. There's an outpouring going on. Something amazing is really happening. Something miraculous. And so God uses tongues in this situation as a sign to get people's attention and say, okay, something new is happening. And I need to be a part of it. And so point number four today is that the sound of an outpouring will amaze many. And it will continue to amaze many in these last days. And so for, we're going to read two more verses and we're going to end this off today. Verse 12. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, What does this mean? But others mocking said they are filled with new wine. And so point number five today is that mockers will always try to degrade an outpouring. And so when this was going on and people were walking by where the upper room was and they're hearing their way, these different languages and they're hearing all this commotion and they're like, okay, what is going on? I don't understand what this is. And so this crowd begins to form, and some of them, they're questioning and saying, okay, you know, what is this? This is very intriguing. You know, there's different ends of the spectrum. Some people are saying, wow, this is amazing. I mean, I need to know what this is about. Some are just, you know, it's just interesting. And they're like, well, this is weird. Um, maybe I need to know a little bit more about what's going on because this is different. This is something I've never experienced before. But then there's a group of people who are mocking what's going on. They're saying, these guys are just drunk. They're crazy. Why are we even looking at this? You know, they're all messed up. It's, it's, they're drunk. That's the only explanation they could come up with was that these people were drunk. But you would think with all these people hearing in their own language, their native tongue, the praises of God, that you would hear that and be like, okay, well, maybe this is legit. But no, these people, they wanted to mock, they wanted to degrade what was going on and said, they're just drunk. They're just drunk. That's all they are. And so oftentimes when we experience an outpouring in our churches, we experience revival, there are going to be people in the community or surrounding area that will mock what's going on. That's just going to happen. They're saying, well, why Why are you doing that? Why are you 
having extra services. Well, why is this special person coming in? Well, why is this happening? Why is that miracle happening? Oh, it's just crazy. Oh, you're just drunk. You're just crazy. They mock it and they try to make fun of it and say, well, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, that's nonsense. And they try to degrade what God is doing. And oftentimes it's people that are either bitter at God and they don't, because they haven't seen these things in their own lives, mostly because it's probably their own fault, but they haven't seen it. And so they get upset and say, well, God can't be in that. That's just ridiculous. They're messed up. They're crazy. And you see in the early Oneness Pentecostal movement of the you know, 1900s, the 20th century, you see the mocking that took place a lot of times. You hear stories of people, you know, getting tomatoes thrown at them, getting booted out of town because of their preaching. We don't really see that as much now, that kind of persecution here in America. But we do see the mockery. And you can get on social media and you can see people degrading what God is doing in apostolic churches and in other churches. And we saw even in Asbury University, you know, I don't agree with all of their theology. I probably don't agree with a lot of their theology. But I would never degrade something that God is doing. I never want to mock a work of God. But that often happens in these situations because either people are skeptical or they just don't want any part of it or they've been hurt by the church or whatever it is. People mock these things. But there is coming a day when that mockery will be silenced. And all that's going to matter is are you his or not? The Bible says that if any man hath not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. You've got to have the Spirit. So when we talk about an outpouring, if you have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you need to receive the greatest gift you could ever receive. You've got to. It's, it's a necessity. <laughs> It is an absolute necessity, and we'll, we'll talk about that more as we go on in this series. The necessity of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the indwelling of the Holy Ghost today. And so why not have an outpouring in your life? Why not? That's my question for you today. Why not you and why not now? And so point number five again today is that mockers will always try to degrade an outpouring. But understand this today, that no matter how much they, the mockers will degrade this, no matter how people will, you know, hate on the move of God and outpouring, no matter the critical comments on social media, no matter what. An outpouring is necessary, and guess what? An outpouring is coming. God is about to send the greatest revival we have ever seen in these last days. As we get closer to the coming of the Lord, He's going to start pouring out His Spirit like we have never experienced. So as we talk about Acts chapter number two in this series, this Pentecost series, understand that this was not just for them on that day. But it's time for us to experience that same outpouring, that same Pentecostal experience in our lives. And we're going to start seeing it more and more as the day approaches, as we get closer to meeting our Lord and Savior. And I'm so excited for that day. And I'm so excited for the outpouring that we're going to see in these last days. 
And if you're ready for it, please share this podcast with a friend. Subscribe for more. And let's just keep talking about revival. That's really what's been going on in several of the last episodes that we've been posting on here. I mean, revival's in the air. Revival's happening. It's here. It's time to jump on board and get on the revival train. So God bless you. I can't wait to see you next time as we continue talking about an outpouring of the Spirit of God. God bless you. See you next time.